Hi everyone. Today we have Ihsan Kamal Anjad here with us and he'll be walking us through exciting new directions such as data sets, approaches, and open problems in computer vision. We'll also be going through object detections and levels of visual understanding. So first thing, what not to do. Uh, the main problem that we have uh, been focusing in the past a uh, couple of decades uh, has been uh, image classification and detection, object detection as a whole. And uh, the very famous one is image net classification problem, and then some like COCO object detection and other variants. Of it. What I have over here, let me in fact minimize this. Uh, what I have over here, as you can see, is that a chart. A chart that shows that while the progress of increasing performance, like accuracy uh, performance on ImageNet, has a kind of plateaued and it's saturated, the number of papers focusing on the very uh, same problem actually exponentially going up. And that's not, that's not a good idea. That's generally a, a bad situation. It means that it's not going to lead to good things. Uh, so what are the open problems? So what I'm telling you is that don't focus on the, on the very first layer of computer vision, which is like detection, object detection. There are many more interesting problems in this field, and we're going to talk about them later. So uh, let me show you these couple of images. Uh, as you can see, there are like a bunch of images here. In fact, the images at the first row to the models that currently we have are, uh, are very similar to the images at the, at the bottom. But we as human, we know that these images are not similar to each other. A car that is parked in a parking uh, is not the same as a car that is right before crashing into something. Or a very friendly German shepherd is not the same as a German shepherd that you wants to bite your hands off. So these are the things that we as human understand, but our model are unable to understand them currently. So what should we do? So let's talk about the different levels of understanding visual data. Currently, we are here. Currently, we can detect objects. We can understand the boundary of objects, basically separate them from each other, and we can even count them and so on and so forth. So this is from Detectron, which is one of the one of the uh, one of the good uh, methods in object detection. Let me see if uh, if I uh, I want to make sure that I uh, if there is some comments. Uh, uh, okay. So yeah, this is where we are right now. But let's talk about this other problem that comes right after that. And it's the state of an object. When you see a door, it, it has different states, right? Open and close and so on and so forth. And we currently don't have systems that understand these kind of things very well. Of course, you can train a model that understands this, this specific door being open and closed, but really they don't understand the concept of being open because the openness can, can refer to a jar or a window or the door of a car being open. And you cannot possibly train a model for every single one of those classes. So you have to understand the concept of openness. And this is the, about the state of an object. Another problem is about relationship and inter interactions and compositions of the objects in the scene. So for example, in this image, if we give it to say an image captioning, in fact, I have done that to like a typical image captionings that we have, it says park, uh, cars parked in the parking lot. But that's not what's happening here. A, a kid is running in front of a car, it's a dangerous situation. But our models are unable to understand this right now. And this is a very interesting problem to solve and there's a huge value to it. Uh, and the last one, probably out of the reach right now, but hopefully in the next uh, couple of years or maybe next decade or so, 
is the reasoning. And you want our models to be able to understand and reason about things. And uh, so this is one example of that. So why are people wearing black? There is, a, there is a connection to the outside world that you can connect this scene to the outside world and understand that, okay, when people are in a funeral, they wear black, uh, black uh, clothes and so on and so forth. So these are, these are really different levels of visual understanding and we have solved only the first level. Okay, let me see how much time I have. Oh, okay, <laughs> I didn't even get to the good stuff. Okay, so um, interesting new directions. First of all, there are many very interesting data sets available. This one is Objectron, go look it up. It's from Google, they recently, they, I think two months ago they published it. It's a 3D version of ImageNet. It's, it's a lot more interesting than ImageNet. The other one is MIT's ObjectNet. So two very interesting data sets. That's one direction that uh, is very interesting. The other one is about problems. So not just detection, but more like a reasoning and logic. One very interesting thing is the Kaggle competition that came up recently. Uh, it's called Abstraction and Reasoning. And the other one is DeepMind's Kinetic. Also, 2020. The next one is uh, the, uh, the direction uh, and approaches. So there are a few new approaches that emerges uh, mainly about the interaction of different modalities of the data. For example, this is ImageBert. Uh, it's uh, it came up from a Microsoft Research recently. Uh, in fact, the GitHub repository is not published yet, but the paper is. And it's very interesting because it, uh, it com uh, combined the, the language understanding with the visual understanding in a very robust way through transformers. And this is very interesting. I think this kind of approaches are gonna be the future of language vision fusion. Uh, another thing, of course, everyone knows about it, transformers, transformers, transformers. In fact, recently, a group from Google Brain showed that uh, this was a very controversial paper. They showed that they can just ignore convolutional neural networks, which are the king of vision, altogether and go with just transformer and beat the state of the art. So that's something to uh, look at. In fact, I have quite radical ideas of why this works. And I believe that it's not gonna be just one, this one instance, they're gonna be everywhere, transformers. Um, the one that I'm very interested in is meta-learning, which is the next level of transform, uh, uh, transfer learning. So as you know, getting something to learn on big data and then transfer it on the problem that you know uh, and, and you are interested in, has been probably the most important success story of machine learning in the past decade. And meta-learning is that story to the next level. Basically, not only learn to how to uh, transfer knowledge, but transfer knowledge in a way that is very agile. So you can transfer it very quickly and adapt to new situations. So, and very last one is representation learning not doing exactly end-to-end, -end, but use deep learning to, to learn a more robust representation of the data and then do other processes on top of that. An example of this is the very new thing from, uh, from uh, Google DeepMinds, uh, AlphaFold, probably you have heard about it. And the idea is that they use deep learning to have a better representation of the data and then they do uh, some other stuff which is not learning on top of that. So gradient descent stuff, I'm not going to go into that. So these are very interesting directions. Computer vision is going to be awesome for the next decade at least. So yeah, go learn. Thank you, Ehsan, for teaching us about computer vision. Mm -hmm.